What I would like to talk to you about today is not just what unconscious bias is and how it can affect our ability to assess others, but the magnitude of those effects. That is, is it something that exists but it's not really a big deal and so we don't have to worry about it? Or in fact, can we measure these effects? Are they significant? And is it something that's impairing our ability to be equitable and um, pro-diversity in our hiring and promotion practices? Canadians value equity and diversity. Most of our institutions have an equity statement of the type that we see here. This is from part from the University of Toronto's um, statement from the uh, Governing Council in 2006. And yet, underrepresentation is still a problem. Most major corporations have a statement of this type. Why? There's been discussions on a number of different axes, particularly when you talk about gender or women in um, academia. Uh, the pool, maybe the pool is not big enough or diverse enough. Maybe these individuals don't have the ability or interest. We won't even go there. Uh, maybe paid work-life balance and institutional culture is not friendly to particular racial groups or, or to, uh, to uh, females. And then finally, what I'm going to talk about today, once you're in those institutions, what's preventing people from getting those leadership roles? What's preventing them from being nominated for those Canada Excellence Research Chairs? And so I'm going to talk about what has been called in the past the glass ceiling. And usually when we talk about bias, we're thinking about kind of racism or sexism or homophobia, right? It's explicit, it's conscious, we can usually tell when we see it, we can tell when it's elected. The person is aware of his or her evaluation, the expression of the bias is intentional, and we would call it sexism, racism, homophobia. What we're talking about here is not that. And I want to quote from David Brooks, a, a reporter, actually a conservative reporter at the New York Times, and he says this, sometimes the behavioral research leads us to completely change how we think about an issue. For example, many of our anti-discrimination policies focus on finding the bad apples who are explicitly prejudiced. Right? They're policies that prevent outright racism or sexism. But in fact, the serious discrimination is implicit, subtle, and nearly universal. And that's what we're talking about today. So where does this unconscious bias come from? What is it? I'm going to refer to some of the psychology literature on something called schema. So as human beings, we tend to think in categories. It's usually sort of an adaptive way to do things, right? We, we group things. It's, it's cold outside, I should wear a jacket. We don't think, OK, it's 15.2 degrees Celsius, right? It's cold, it's warm, it's hot. We group things together. We do that in a variety of different ways, and this is what we call schema. Schema are categorical assessments of individuals and relationships between individuals using categories in the way we do throughout our lives in a variety of different ways. They shape our expectations and evaluations about things in those different groups. And expectations and evaluations that we've attached to a particular group can lead to unconscious or implicit bias. These expectations, these categorizations, are not something we do consciously. They're typically developed as we're children, as we're growing up, and they're a function of the dominant culture to which we're exposed. They're a function of the stereotypes to which we're exposed as we're growing up. So bias, then, it's still a differential evaluation of individuals and their um, uh, groups, but implicit or unconscious bias the person does not perceive or endorse their evaluation. And in fact, quite often, people who express unconscious biases express biases that are contradictory to their conscious beliefs. They're not related to the self-identified group of the evaluator. It doesn't prevent you from being biased against black people if you are, in fact, black, because they're a function of the culture in which you grew up. Even though the data currently are, um, I would say, grim in terms of the effects of bias, the magnitude of the effects of our biases, one thing to keep in mind is that we all have the biases. If we know we have them, we can actually do things to offset them. If we ignore the problem, it's the elephant in the room. And after decades and decades of attempts at increasing diversity and equity, we've failed so far. We're making incremental moves. Big steps can be achieved if we also consider this.